Hype train coming. The Brooklyn Nets take care of business on the road in Chicago. Big three on the court. Rookies on showcase as well. As we remind the league, we the Brooklyn Nets, but we can do it too, Doug, that your biggest problem is the Brooklyn Nets, and they are a dominant force as they continue to get closer and closer to health and closer to closer to having everyone fill the roles we all envisioned them in when this season kicked off. Oh, man, scary hours, dude. This was awesome. Awesome. Like, what a win. That There's a statement win over the Bulls. Almost too much to talk about from this one. We we basically go through everything. The big three, the role players, the starting lineup changes, um, you know, the guys that came in and just, like, threw in huge numbers off the bench. This was the best win of the year. Right at the time, the Nets needed the most. We are going to break it all down. But first, the theme music. <laughs> You are Locked On Nets, your daily Brooklyn Nets podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Brooklyn, Brooklyn, yo. Oh, yes, it is the Locked On Nets podcast on the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team championship caliber Brooklyn Nets every single day. That is Doug Norrie, owner-operator, DFSR, Daily Fantasy Sports Projections, FanDuel, DraftKings. He's got you covered over there. It's Daily Fantasy Sports Rankings, just to be clear. I'm Adam Armbrecht, covering the New York Football Giants on their road to glory, starting this offseason on the One Giant Podcast. We're here, Doug. We'll talk about rookies, sure. At some point, we're going to talk about blowing out a very competitive Chicago Bulls team that could be a problem in the playoffs. But more than anything... It's the big three back on the floor together. And maybe, just maybe, reminding Brooklyn Nets fans and the entire league, we're unstoppable. Yeah, look, look, when you look at BetOnline or whatever other book, when you just see that the Nets are odds on championship favor, like this is why. This is, it's this, it's this group together, these three guys together. Um, when, and we'll talk about all the other role players too, but when these three guys specifically play together, it's just an absolute onslaught of offense and this is just this is the best win of the season this is just what the nets needed right now like this like a tough loss in portland flying across the country you know overtime in san, in san antonio reverse san antonio a little bit of a losing streak before that it's all been sort of like hinging on you know worrying about what's going on with this team and then they just come out in this game and in 48 minutes remind you like oh right this is why they're the favorites <laughs> like this oh, group it. Like, like this is just what this is what when they get rolling downhill, they just you can't defend them like you just can't. There's nothing to be done about them. And it was just this is if anything, if at any point during the timeline, the Nets needed a win like this. This was it right now. Like this win, national TV, the whole thing like this was their best win of the season. They got a lot of games coming up over the next several days. Going to get home, going to go back on the road for a big stretch. Like you said, we, we've been talking about this. Brooklyn Nets fans, national media, everyone's talking about, boy, they can't seem to get these wins against some of the better teams in the NBA. And as we say, we're not going to get too high, too low on a win or a loss. But at this moment, this was the most critical thing they could have done was come out and look unstoppable uh, against the Chicago Bulls. On top of that, inside of this game, first of all, we're going to get into the stat lines here and, and what it means to have these three players on the court and how everyone doesn't have to be at the absolute pinnacle of their game every single night together with these guys. But boy, when I look out across a line and I see 30, 25, and 33, those aren't those aren't points, Doug. Those are minutes. And that's what Kevin yeah. Durant, Kyrie Irving, and James Harden played tonight. And gosh, gosh, does that get me feeling <laughs> as good as anything else that you could tell me <laughs> is that Kevin Durant played 30 minutes in a blowout win. Still give you 27 points, by the way, too. Well, I'll say that like it's pretty funny about how this game went because it went the exact opposite of basically everything you and I said last, like literally last podcast, <laughs> like one less than twenty, or just like a little bit more than twenty four hours ago, was that we were saying, okay, well they can't, like Nash can't help himself when it comes to Durant's minutes. They can't blow anyone out, so they, <laughs> so they can't ever rest anybody. All this. When stuff, I tell you, Nash is a fan of the show. He's a fan of the show, man. He listens in, he takes notes, and he tries to execute. He wants to please us. Well, great news. It was all wrong because they just did all the exact, they did all that stuff tonight where it was right. They just, they, it was such a stomping that they, 
were able to rest guys in a way they really haven't been able to do that much this season against a really, I mean, Bulls are first place in the East. Like I, this is, this is a really, really good team. I know that they're not a hundred percent right in this moment. I mean, neither are the Nets, but the, um, like this was like kind of a statement win. This is not even kind of, this just was a statement win tonight to be able to do this on this stage, to be able to, like you said, not even have to play everyone their full minutes. And they even, even gave Harden a few extra minutes. Like he easily could have come out six minutes before, yes. um, yeah. before he actually came out. He could have played under 30 minutes also. I think it was just that he hadn't played the game before, so whatever. But like he could have easily had his minutes under under 30 as well. And yeah, like when when it's just all working and we just haven't seen it because of all the circumstances that have been around this season. And you know, we didn't even get to see it that much last year because – the minutes just never overlapped in a way when they all weren't injured. And it's just a reminder like when it actually does happen and clicks all together, that it is just about as perfect basketball as you can get specifically in the offensive end. Like you just cannot, there's nothing you can do. There's no, like there's no scheme you can really throw at this that where you feel defensively uh, as the opposing team, like you have any chance to really stop it or slow it down. Kyrie Irving scored nine points. They scored 138, <laughs> they scored 138 points in a game where Kyrie scored nine. Like that has to terrify you if you're other teams. Oh yeah, and this is what you're saying there at the top about yes, j- just the three of them being on the court together. That's what it creates is is the spacing, the difficulty of you want to double team somebody. Like you want to double team you somebody can. when you yeah exactly right. you, that option gets taken off the table for you. Like they did it no like longer. three times to Durant and it was the easiest basket of the <laughs> night. Like it was. And, they, <laughs> and here was the thing that I really liked about the first half too, because again, inside of all these numbers, so you're not going to look at anything that these three did necessarily. <laughs> They're all good lines, but they all played reduced minutes, which is which is the best part about this. But in the first half alone, I thought that it was great that you saw six, three, and six. Those are the assist numbers for Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, and James Harden. So when those guys are combining for 15 first half assists, it means that not not only are the other guys on the floor with them being effective and hitting their shots when they have the opportunities, but it's to your point, because the buckets are so easy. So yeah. all it is is the gravity of their presence on the floor. And then finishing in and around the rim, knocking down a couple of wide open looks. There's there's so much trickle down effect of the value that having the three of them out there on the court together was. But this is not a game where all of three of them were at their peak. I do think that James Harden, which clearly the rest piece for him more than any, more than anywhere, or as much as anyone on this roster, you would say the rest for James Harden clearly seems to be key to him being at his freshest and being his most effective. Yeah, so it, all this stuff, I look, I think we could gush about this forever. Like, I'm prepared to, so don't worry about it. But there's just so many things that happen with this team. Like, you know, the assist piece is because you just get advantageous um, defensive or like defensive matchups each time, right? Because you can't bring doubles. So then, like, there's, or if you do, there's going to be someone open. The, um, and this has to do with Harden also, is that what you saw from the Nets actually in the first half, and, and actually the first half was close, and but this is still, you saw it so much. They played with such great pace in this game. Like, yeah. this was constantly, and Harden too, and Harden's been guilty of sort of like, lackadaisically bringing the ball up and it just takes forever. And like, there's been stagnation around like just them getting into the flow. And like, you know, sometimes it's like 10 seconds are going off the shot clock before something even starts happening. And it's like, this is like, like that slowness that we saw that was not there at all. This game, they were absolutely shot out of a cannon. They wanted to get in transition as much as possible. When this team gets into transition, the opposing defense is dead on cross matches. And so like, they were just pushing the ball, pushing the ball. Kyrie's always been good at that. And I think that this is why, like when they have Kyrie, they want to do this more because Kyrie is always like, let's go, let's go, let's go. Right. Um, and when he's there, I think incentivize the other guys. Cause I think we saw a pace from Harden tonight that we really haven't seen um, in a while, kind of right. Like they're yeah. They, they want to get out there and it's not all running. Like it's not fast breaks, but it's like rebound. Let's go. They're like, let's, let's go because we're going to catch you in bad defensive schemes. You were going to be on your heels. And that's just going to be trouble. And I think we just saw this pace, this initiative that we just haven't seen from them. And I think a lot of it stems from Kyrie because he wants to do that naturally. I do not think James Harden wants to do that naturally. Like he's not like he's not like he's not a default, like out in open court kind of guy. Like he's right. like methodical. Um, but when you have this like when you have the system sort of working like that we did see like this just more kind of giddy up and go. And and that was when it was close. And so when they were doing that in the second half then it's just really kind of just all over when it's just all clicking. So I think the I was just that if, if I'm just trying to look at anything that like one high level thing that I thought went really well, it was that it was like this, just like, come on, come on, come on, come on, let's go. Like, and when they do that, you're just, you're, you're really, really, really going to be hard pressed to stop them.
This is the yin and yang of Kyrie Irving and James Harden. We talked about it a couple episodes ago where I was I was trying to be complimentary of, of what Kyrie Irving does in the passing game and what he brings to the offense while not dismissing what James Harden's value is. But once you get these guys out there, it's to your point. It doesn't mean it's a fast break, get out and go pace. But it also, we all know, once Kyrie's on the court, well, guess what? That's a possession or two off for James Harden to not be on ball, to not be setting up the offense, to not be needing to drive with consistency, which he did great in this game and got to the line and was excellent there, right? So it just, again, it, you know, we talk about taking the pressure off of the other players on the team. It takes pressure off of one another when all three of these yeah. guys are on the court together in a lot of different ways. We'll continue to get into that. We'll now, And then we'll also get into some of the rookies. And yeah, guess what, guys? I'm even going to talk about a couple of veterans as well. But first, Doug, if you could tell the people about prize picks. Uh, if you're into the DFS prop game, um, like if you want to just go in there, you don't want to put in lineups with salaries like some of these other operators where you're just kind of competing with uh, dudes or some ladies out there that are just putting in thousands of lineups. Now, prize picks is your solution for this. They have more NBA props than any other DFS prop operator out there on the market. You can do the superstars, the James Hardens and the Kevin Durant's Kyrie Irvings of the world. Go into the bench players as well, too. They have props for all these guys. Um, and if you're just a fan of a team or you want to pile some of them together, prize picks is where you have to go. You pick two to five players. You do an over-under on their projections. It's just you versus the numbers. You can win up to 10 X, like I said, if you did the Harden, um, if you did the Harden props tonight on prize picks with the assists and the points, uh, you were sitting very, very pretty over uh, on prize picks. Uh, they can allow you to mix sports as well. So maybe this weekend you want to pile some NFL and NBA together. No problem. Prize picks allows you to do that. If you go to prizepicks.com right now, uh, you sign up, you use the promo code NBA, just like the National Basketball Association, NBA, you're going to get uh, $50 free. Uh, if your first prize pick entry scores a single point, there you go. That's going to be pretty darn easy to do. Just get a single point and you're going to get $50 free on prize picks as easy as it gets. Uh, go to pricepicks.com, type in that promo code MBA, grab that $50 for free pits. Prize picks is daily fantasy made easy. And hey, thanks for making us your first listen of the day. We appreciate it. And we're free on all those great platforms. You can make your ses second listen locked on now. Of course, all that great roundtable discussion from the local experts on every single team that only really the Lockdown Podcast Network can provide because we got guys in all the cities across this great land breaking it down just as hard as we are. No one harder, but just as hard as we do it here. And of course, we knew we were going to get to these guys. I was ecstatic, surprised a little bit because, again, as you said, last episode, with last couple of episodes, we've been talking about where is Steve Nash's willingness to lean into some new ideas or try some new things. Then the starting lineup comes out and bang. Now, there's a necessity from the Dayron Sharp piece, but the Kessler Edwards decision, that was an active choice. And this, I know we can talk about matchups and what maybe worked best here, but I thought that putting Kessler Edwards in here after we were wondering coming out of the protocols, him ramping back up, we kind of saw this. Didn't see him until late games. Then we saw him in the third quarter. Then the first half, here was a, probably a big jump forward getting him into the starting rotation. But I thought that it was obviously worth it. And you saw the payoff because there's just athleticism and, and youth and, and excitement that I think plays well off of these big three stars when you put uh, Kessler Edwards and Sharp out there. I loved it when I saw the names um, and I love trying it and I just have nothing but compliments for this. And I think actually the sharp thing probably wasn't as easy a call as you think. Like they could have started Blake here. I know yeah. he's smaller than Vooch, but it wouldn't have been crazy to have Blake out there. I'm really glad they didn't. And um, because like the sharp thing ended up working, it wasn't all perfect, but between the two of them, like Edwards was fantastic man like yep. his de he got he was thrown to the absolute wolves having his primary assignments being levine and De demar derozan no on defense Hop and in, those Rook. guys and those guys were good in the first half for sure but man it really wasn't because he was like doing anything wrong like he yep. really was over every screen shooting every gap like was up on them they scored those guys are like two of the best scorers in the game it's just going to happen he really really fought the good fight uh, uh between those guys because that is not your first start and those are your two assignments like it was primarily levine to start um but he was like uh, sort of switched on to demar a lot um so that was really where you just saw him operating the whole time on defense and it was just basically as good as you could ever expect those like that's an impossible assignment those two are about as difficult to guard um in open in open spacing as anybody else in the league and to be thrown to the wolves like that in a start in a very high profile game and to play excellent, like yep. 
I just can't say enough. And even early in the game, like his willingness to shoot the three, I was going to say early in the game, it was almost like he was like, yeah, James Harden, Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, like perfect guys to get me the ball. Like that's kind of what I felt like. That's that's what what it felt like is like his operating mentality was early. I love it. Like if you're going to be out there, because like if you're going to start with those guys, you have to be willing to shoot open threes and shoot open shots when you have. (laughs) I was going to say, by the way, because if you don't, Kevin Durant or James Harden or Kyrie, especially Kevin Durant, he will get in your hip pocket and give you an earful. If I, if we get you the ball in the right spot, pull the trigger. I mean, and that's what you should be doing. So like you say, the level of confidence that he played with there was impressive i think i think it's impressive that steve nash again to your point chose to finally put him in the start in arguably maybe the most important game to date for the brooklyn Nets season you throw him in there the three ball didn't fall for him in this game just one of four but really it's the i, I think as much as anything and more than anything it's the defensive side of it he had three steals yeah. the length is very present in the passing lanes he did a great job he got credited with one block i think it could have even been two it's just you're you're seeing what his value is from an athleticism standpoint on both ends of the floor. And that's a a clear contrast to a lot of these veteran players, regardless of what you think their value is. Kessler Edwards is length and athleticism. And the Nets don't necessarily have a lot of that behind the big three. And look, like I, like I said, he was on Levine. Like Levine only took 13 shots in this game. Levine like can consistently get up like 18 to 22 shots in a game. Uh, yep. And I know and Levine still played 33 minutes. He was so active defensively. He's just kind of he was just kind of everywhere. Um, he like the stage was not too big for him. He's a super physical dude, um, and he just has like and he has the body size because those are big guys too. Like Levine yep. and specifically DeRozan are like are bigger are kind of like bigger scoring wings, and. I mean, not like Durant kind of wings, but you know what I mean? They're they're not, they're not small. These aren't like small little, you know, point guard kind of guys. These are pretty big dudes. And I just thought it was great. It's going to be really, actually, it's funny. It's going to be actually hard to get him out of the starting lineup now. Like you're just going to have to keep doing, you're going to have to keep doing it because, um, and this is, and I just think it's has more of a life. It's going to have more of a lifespan than the David Duke kind of stuff because he can mm-hmm. just has this one extra thing, like this one extra floor spacing thing. We've talked about it for multiple podcasts. Now we finally saw it. It just it's just more complimentary to what the Nets are trying to do. And like it's just it's frankly taken too long. But the um but if we're here now, they just have to keep going with this for the at least the short term, even game with games that Kyrie doesn't play, because he's still more complimentary um than some of the other guys that they've been putting out in that spot. Yeah, if you talk about being at a home game and you don't have Kyrie Irving, e- even Bembry, right? You, you still lose that one element. So that's the difference. And by the way, this only helps a guy like Bembry in the value that he has in the rotations because now you have these two players that are length, they have size, good defensive value, and then obviously it's the caveat for Kessler Edwards. Let's not skip over completely here, Dayron Sharp, because I think it'd be easy to look past the fact that he was 10 of 14 from the field, gave you 20 points, gave you seven rebounds. Essentially, you know, he gave you everything that we've seen from him before. Now, you know, not to not to trend negative, 22 minutes, gave you everything he had and had to because he had no Nicholas Claxton and he had no LaMarcus Aldridge. I think the best thing that I took away from this game that we're always so complimentary about Nicholas Claxton and how well he works with James Harden, I thought it was good that Dayron Sharp was able to show, hey, I can work in the flow of a faster-paced offense as well, because I think that was a little bit of the question. He's bigger, he's thicker, he does certain things really well, but can you also keep yourself at pace? He took a lot of feeds in and around the basket very well. He finished around the rim very effectively, an area that we we know Claxton has been coming along with, but sometimes can struggle. He's, you know, he's he's an NBA body, man. He, yeah. he took that one ball down low, went up strong through all contact. No one was going to stop him. And that does provide a little bit of a different element from a Claxton and obviously from the shooting of a LaMarcus Aldridge. So to, to whatever level he's going to, I don't think this is a, and you can't get De'Aaron Sharp out of the starting lineup, no, but no. I do think he's, he's moving my needle a little bit further to whatever I think he can be for the Nets. I'm getting closer and closer to saying you're, you want to do that with consistency now as opposed to spot starts or spot opportunities. I think you can start to say that about him as well. If it's 10 minutes, 12 minutes, whatever number you want to put on it, I think he can be effective for those bursts in a repeatable way on a game-to-game basis. Yeah, for sure. He's got a, he had a good chemistry with Harden here rolling to the basket. He's a good screener, mostly because he's super thick <laughs> right like and actually the, and then that's actually you actually don't have a lot of good guys that are really good screeners yep. like they're um a lot of their other guys are good at other stuff but screening is just not one of them and he actually just because he's just the girth like he um it's just harder for guys to get around him and when you play with hard and that's super important because if you can if if you can set the screen set the defender and then move to the basket because he actually does have pretty good bounce for a for a big guy um 
we saw that in and around the rim, like this is just one of those kind of, this is one of those situations where there's just certain guys that can just put up numbers like this in short spurts. It doesn't necessarily always mean they're super 30 minute a game NBA ready guys. Like you just have to watch enough basketball to know that sometimes guys like this can just put up, just can po- absolutely pile on <laughs> in, in, in shorter spurts. See but Andre Jordan, right? Yeah, I mean, right. It, 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 be a certain type of player and you can have success. It doesn't mean that it's impactful on, you know, the way you need it to be from a winning or losing standpoint every time, but you can still fill a role. Yeah. They lost the minutes that he played. He was a minor. They were, he was a minus five for the game. I'm using that instructively because the Nets won this game by a ton. Right. So like right. he played and, and he was a total foul machine. That being said, like the part where he probably, it, it probably can only, it mostly has to happen with Harden because Harden is going to be really good about getting him the ball. Um, and I, I, I'm just like saying I'm, I'm going to pump the brakes just a little bit because I know people are going to look at the 20 points and be like, oh, my God, this guy's like the next coming of, you know, this guy's like DeAndre Ayton plus like something else or something. Right. He, he's really just not that. But you got everything you wanted to get him out of him. I, he was really physical with Vooch, which is really important for them tonight, probably in a way that those other guys couldn't be. Yeah, and, and he got the, a lot of those fouls came early, but then he actually was pretty good about the fouls until late. Like, he kind of hung around with three to four fouls most of the game, and then the last couple happened late when the game didn't really – when it was kind of over. No, I, I loved everything we saw about him, but I'm going to – I think it's good for us to separate the Kessler Edwards and De'Ron Sharp thing yeah. here. I, I, I think that – I don't think this needs to be your starting lineup going forward because I just don't think – like, I would still – there's going to be lots of other situations where I would probably rather have Claxton here. Yeah. Right. And so, um, and th- by the way, this is a good problem to have. Like, this is, was, this is where you want to be. The best part is that now you have, including the Marcus Aldrich, you have these three different guys that, that do, who knows if any of them, for all the varying different reasons, can play 35, 40 minutes consistently every night. But I got three different guys that I can create some different problems for defenses based on matchups. So it's, it's the best version of not having the pure 40 minute starter at the five. This is the best thing you could have is options and options that you have confidence in to different levels. So uh, hit us up with, with with Bet Online here real quick so we can keep diving in on this. And a couple of veterans, though. Yeah, Bet Online wishing you a happy new betting year. 2022, we are getting to the NFL playoffs. We're getting toward the All Star break in NBA. Bet Online's got you covered for everything you want to see over there. Uh, the Nets were odds on favor to win the championship over Bet Online. Uh, that is not going to change after this game. They remain the number one spot for all the best sports wagering action for 2022 and beyond. New year, get a new updated desktop and mobile website. If you sign up today on Bet Online, you're going to grab a 50% welcome bonus on the first deposit, but you have to use the promo code Locked On, just like our podcast network. Locked On over on Bet Online football, basketball, hockey, boxing, UFC, some Vegas casino games as well. It's all there for you. Bet online in 2022. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all of your favorite sports. Bet online where the game starts. So it's awesome to get Kessler Edwards now entrenched into a starting role on this team that he'll have to play himself out of. No one's just going to probably come back. I mean, I'll be curious to see when Joe Harris comes back healthy, how you work out these rotations. Good problem to have there. The other big benefit, though, we've talked about this when the big three are on the court and they've balanced themselves out, you start to see the trickle-down effect. I'll start with Patty Mills, because this is a guy we've talked about before, playing 30 minutes a game, averaging 10 more minutes over his career uh, this season than before that, on pace to have 600 three-point attempts this season. The numbers were falling off a cliff month by month for him. 22 minutes, 7 of 10 from the field, 6 of 8 from beyond the arc. Everything about his game gets easier, specifically when Kyrie Irving is back, because obviously he's ahead of him in the rotations. And then also, just like everybody else, the benefit of the spacing. And I thought early in this game for Patty Mills, what you saw differently for him was he wasn't playing with the pressure of needing to take those perimeter shots. He started a lot of times by driving into the lane and kicking out to the perimeter for someone else to get a look. And then let the byproduct of everybody else having success lead to you being able to really pour it on in the second half and help get this team a lead that the Bulls weren't going to be able to come back from. Like that's this is the ideal role for Patty Mills is be fresh and start raining fire in the second half and helping give rest to some of these other guys. So that's that's the first and foremost. I think that that is as crucial as anything else that the Nets accomplish over these next stretch of games with Kyrie back. Everything just gets easier. 
Like oh, everything, God, I it just, it's just all it is. It's just everything gets easier when you have these three guys playing together. It's going to be absolute broken record time for us on this because this is just the way the team was constructed. This should have been happening all year. Like we, we shouldn't just be waiting till January 13th to be talking about how good these three guys play together. It was supposed to be the thing from the start. Other circumstances got in the way of that. That's just where, where it is. Um, and it's just one of those things that you have to remind yourself of when you see it because you're like, right, Patty Mills was brought in here to be a 22 minute a guy, 22 minute a game ish guy off the bench that was supposed to just knock down catch and shoot threes. Like this is what if you go back to preseason, this is what we talked about his role to be. He's had to do a lot more because of just necessity. But this right here is back to the role of when they originally brought him in was this like all those shots, all those three pointers were just completely wide open. Yep. Like there, there was, I mean, there was, I mean, maybe there was like too many runouts on them. Like most of the time it was just shooting practice. Uh, so it's just one of those things where everything just gets easier. The load is off of everybody else and you just stay in your lane. And they just, they sign guys who definitely just had lanes. <laughs> like yep. this was like the, the, everyone had the lane they were supposed to be in. Everyone's lane got all freezing <laughs> screwed up because and then someone came through like kramer and seinfeld and just started painting over the dotted lines and like, and oh my know, god which, which way is like, loose oh. now <laughs> right exactly and then you're just like, going over the rumble strips and stuff like this is just it just and the nets did a good job of kind of like having to deal with this i think for you know all things considered but it's just again what happens like the game gets so much easier for everybody else and like specifically a guy like this who's just going to knock down open threes Right. Like and and yeah. and that's just gonna be the case. And you made a great point. Like I he had like I had not really thought about the fatigue thing with Mills until you brought it up. And I thought that was an awesome point. And I think it was just a hundred percent correct in a way that I just hadn't really thought about. Was that right? He just this was more minutes and stuff that he's ever been asked to play at any yep. point really in his whole career. And he's not exactly a spring chicken. So to be able to just get back and just get good twenty to twenty three minutes or whatever out of him is that that's exactly where you want him to be. It's not going to be like they're not going to be able to do it the rest of the time because whatever, like the home games and stuff. But this is just another reminder. It's like this was the, this was the thing they brought him in to specifically do because he's totally elite when he's just asked to do this thing. Oh, no, 100 percent. And by the way, I just wanted to crunch those numbers real quick. He'd be playing an additional 800 minutes this season over his career average if they had kept the pace that he was at. Averages about 1800 minutes a year. 2400 that's what you were going to chalk him up to and if you think it's not going to hurt a 33 year old body especially when it comes to the playoffs it was going to and, and that, real quick yeah, he and, and he played a ton in the olympics too I, like yes. i know that wasn't that wasn't like a you know months and months long process but he played a lot in the olympics and was actually asked to do a ton in the olympics too because he pl he actually plays like more of a point guard role on the australian national team because like the game is just kind of built a little different on the international level so like he didn't really have a summer off either so if you're just kind of piling on him having to play way more than he's probably played a lot throughout his career. Like this was just kind of all piling up, but it, it's really more about this, what he's had to do this season. And, and listen, the other guy is Blake Griffin. Uh, I'm just going to give a tip <laughs> of a cap to him because I, I, it's still not pretty. It still isn't always great. No. And also like this, all, it makes me go back to the beginning of the year when he's putting on the boots and the hard hat and he's doing the gritty things. He was down on the floor three, four times in this one. He managed to outlet a couple passes from his back. Like, He's still I think that he actually still does have a role on this team, even when everybody gets back healthy. I think this hierarchy now is you want to sprinkle in. Obviously, Kessler Edwards is now going to be a part of starting lineup. Cam Thomas is going to have a role probably more at home than on the road when Kyrie is available. But Blake Griffin, again, when you start to have the balance, when all three of the stars are there, his minutes are good. And he gets to do the one. And he, all he gets to do is kind of be this aged bully causing some problems, mucking it up a little bit, finishing around the rim, doing some spin moves, throwing out some of the retro stuff. Like, I, and I, you can't buy into when you say, you know, use the numbers when they work for you. He was a plus 34. You know what I mean? It worked for him tonight. But, but five rebounds, two assists, two steals, nine points, and the scrappiness. Like, if you think about having just some of these guys that help give you a little bit of an identity, I do think that Blake Griffin still serves that. Now, it doesn't mean that I'm telling you he played 20 minutes tonight. Is that probably too many? Yeah, it probably is. But when you settle him down into a 15 minutes or so role where he basically comes in to clean some things up or take on some big bodies for a little while, he can still do that for you. And I, I'm not overstating it. I just this is where veterans get again back into your lane. Griffin, that's your lane on this team. Be a hard nosed cheerleader, essentially, and slightly glorified at that and then do some things well when you get the looks.
Yeah, hundred percent. Like, uh, like he said, plus thirty four in twenty minutes. Like, Bembry was right there with him, plus thirty five. Wow. They were all part of that run that happened <laughs> yeah. in the third in the third quarter to the fourth quarter where the Bulls just couldn't score at all. Um, and so, I, plus minus, I think is mostly kind of like not a perfect metric. We talked about that a lot. It's just funny when these are like totally hilarious <laughs> numbers, right. yeah, like just completely out of the box like stuff that just happened in your limited time on the court. But yeah, no, again, this is just the theme in the whole podcast is when these three guys are playing together, everyone else, I was said it 10 times here, but like everyone else just do the things that you need to do. Like we don't need to watch Blake Griffin shooting three pointers, which was happening early in the year when they kind of needed him to space the floor a little bit. And it was kind of a total train wreck. Right, right? Perfect like, example. We, we get annoyed at something that, that he's being asked to do that we would never think he should be doing. Right. Correct. Correct. Because it's like, well, we just don't have enough spacing. So you're going to need to stand, you know, uh, foul line extended and shoot threes. And you're like, well, that's going to be a disaster. And it was. And so the like and so but just don't do that anymore. We don't need you to do that anymore. It took one. It looked terrible tonight. Um, <laughs> but the but, and, I, and he should have taken it. But for the most part, they're just that was it. Like, don't do any more of that. We don't need you to do it. You don't need to stand there. And so when you're not being asked to do that, just go and do this other gritty stuff that you have sort of formed your way into late in late in his career. Like he's made this total late career pivot to what he, what he used to be, which was all bounce as athletic a dude as you've ever seen in your life on the basketball court, like basically made his whole career off athleticism for like a long time of Athlet- athleticism and like elbow jumpers. Like that was like, basically that was basically what he did and it all worked. He doesn't, can't really do either anymore but it's still but he's but he's formed himself into this other kind of guy and the reason they had to sit him down earlier in the year was because he couldn't do the the stuff that they needed him to do because they just didn't have the other personnel to do it and now they just don't do that stuff anymore take some charges get in there like do this whirly whirling dervish kind of like stuff around the rim which still looks disgusting but it kind of like a couple of them went in um the most beautiful and, basketball move i've ever seen in my life <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, and so, and it's just all good. Like, this is, I, this was just such a, this was just such a nice window. And I guess we'll probably get out of here in a second, but this was such a nice window again of what this team can look like when it's just all clicking in the way that they had originally envisioned the team. Yeah. Like, this was the, this was the original vision for the team, this group right here. I know Joe Harris isn't there, but every team is going to lose a guy here or there, specifically around these big three. Like, this was what, the, when they all put it together. This is why we bet them like they're over on their wins and like they were the, the championship favorite. Like this, it's it, you kind of forget about it because the way the, the season has worked out so far, this is a good reminder. So I know we got, I'm sure we got, they had a, they're on the back to back here. They got to play OKC. So we're going to be back again post game tomorrow. No Kyrie after, uh, after this one because they're going back home. But yeah, you couldn't ask anything more from this game. No, it's fantastic, and it's also the reminder. We were as close as you could be, and it doesn't mean there aren't still things to critique about Nash and the way that he's worked stuff, but when you do get this sample, you kind of go, oh, right, any coach, any team, this is what you were envisioning. Now the tweaks that you make off of this, keeping Kessler Edwards in the starting lineup, things like that are going to make the difference about how we feel about what you've accomplished over the first half of the season, essentially. So listen, it's rookie hype, it's it's great plays from the big three, and it's even some veterans getting back into that smooth rhythm where we think they can be the most successful. It's awesome. And, and, and by the way, it pulls you back within a game and a half of the Bulls and reminds Chicago in the East, yeah, in case you were wondering, we're still the biggest problem you have out there. Yeah, 100%. All right, go over, uh, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. We had a million comments uh, for, for the yesterday's podcast, which is awesome. Um, so go over, make sure you like and subscribe to the Locks on Nets YouTube. This episode and more will be up over there. Love the numbers we're seeing over there. It's uh, just awesome. I love just I love logging into YouTube every day, reading what people have had to say, try to jump in uh, and have a little conversation as well. So go uh, subscribe to the Lockdown Nets YouTube channel. I will put that link in the show notes. We've shouted out a lot of guys over on YouTube, and we appreciate it. This one goes out to Jay Will, Jay Will Too Real over on Twitter. Him and I were just having a great back and forth about the rookies all throughout the game, hyping them up, talking about their roles. So shout out to him. It was a lot of fun, and we'll see you commenting, I'm sure, tomorrow because I said, you said, you were going to listen. So this is also checking in here. Are you following? Are you with us? Out the door on this, Brooklyn Nets. Absorb what is useful, discard what is not, and what is uniquely your own will remain. Bruce Lee. Oh, one of the all-time great poets, RIP. We will be back again tomorrow talking more Brooklyn Nets basketball.